Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's a pleasure to um, welcome everyone this morning um, as we recognize our amazing presidential award recipients today. I'm thrilled that we are joined by so many friends and family here, as well as faculty members, administrators, and community partners who have um, mentored these exceptional students during their time at Tufts University. Every year, we celebrate the many outstanding achievements in civic engagement and public service of our students with these prestigious presidential awards for civic life. Active citizenship and positive social impact are at core values at Tufts, and they are defining strengths of this institution. Reading through the many nominations we received this year, I was struck by the caliber of the students and the quality of the nominations. It was a very, very difficult time for those that were choosing these, as well as myself, to sift through all these submitted nominations to select this prestigious group. Thank you to all the faculty members, staff, students, and community partners who submitted nominations this year. You identified students from across the university doing inspiring work every day that has had and will continue to have a profound impact on communities both near and far. The collective achievements of this year's award recipients is representative of the broad range of civic leadership we champion so highly at Tufts so that our students are prepared to tackle today's and tomorrow's most pressing problems and to make a positive impact on the communities in which we live. You will hear more about our award recipients shortly as each is introduced by his or her nominators who will share these students' accomplishments in more detail. After we present the awards, Debbie Kuchiever, Dean of the Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine, will make concluding remarks, and then I'll close today's program. So first, it's my pleasure to introduce Alan Solomon, Dean of the Jonathan M. Tisch College of Civic Life, to give opening remarks and be your MC this morning. Please join me in welcoming Dean Alan Solomon. Thank, thank you, thank you, Tony, and thank you for your leadership in this area and for continuing um, to value the, this, these important presidential awards for civic engagement. I want to echo the President's uh, greetings to all friends and family members, nominators, and especially today's award recipients. Uh, I want to join President Monaco in thanking all of the Tufts faculty, staff, and community members who not only helped us select the extraordinary students that we honor today, but whose mentorship and support enhanced both their learning and their impact at Tufts and beyond. I want to thank my Tisch colleagues, especially Jess Burns and Dina Alexander, for their hard work coordinating this year's awards, going through all of the nominations, uh, and also organizing this morning's ceremony. The pres presidential awards for civic life reflect this university's foundational belief that its mission is not only to educate successful professionals, but also to prepare students to be active citizens who are able to address the most pressing challenges facing our communities, our nation, and the world. We believe this commitment to civic life, supported by Tisch College and prevalent throughout the university, deserves to be valued, recognized, and celebrated as we celebrate and recognize academic, athletic, and other achievements. That is one reason why I consider this presidential award to be one of the highest honors conferred by Tufts University. Another reason is the prevalence of civic engagement at Tufts, where literally thousands of students uh, uh, at all of our seven schools engage in meaningful service and community activities during their time here. Many, like today's award recipients and the hundreds of students that we induct er yearly into Tisch College's Honest Civicus, make engagement a hallmark of their Tufts education. Today we honor 14 students from three of Tufts campuses whose contribution to civic life stood out even among the remarkable work of their peers. We celebrate the depth of their commitment and their impact on issues ranging from education to sustainable development, their work with local middle schoolers or underserved patients, their accomplishments affecting change right here in Medford or halfway around the world. 
As is the case every year, I'm especially pleased that so many of this year's Presidential Award recipients are recognized in part for work they did through programs at Tisch College or with Tisch College support. This includes Anissa and Michael, who are Tisch scholars, Carissa and Benya and Kristen, who were Tisch Summer Fellows, Andre, who is one of our STEM ambassadors, and Rebecca, who received the grant from the Tisch Edu Civic Education Fund, Civic Engagement Fund, uh, and who excelled at the School of Medicine's Community Service Learning Program. But whether or not you worked with Tisch College during your years at Tufts, I hope that you will all consider yourselves part of our family and Tisch College alumni who embody and advance the mission of civic engagement that brings us all here this morning. In fact, on May 9th, we are hosting a gathering of Tufts alumni as we launch the Civic Life Network at a special event at the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library featuring Congressman Joe Kennedy. We hope that this new alumni network will be an important avenue for jumbos to stay connected with Tufts University and with Tisch College and with each other, and to contribute to our shared task of strengthening civic and democratic life. If you haven't already, you will receive an invitation soon to this event, and I hope that many of you can make it. So now let's move into the important part of this morning, which is the recognition and awarding um, of this prestigious award. Let me just make a few notes, uh, if I may. First of all, nominators, after your brief remarks, please join the president in presenting the awards and posing for photographs. Each student's school dean is also welcome to join for photos. Please remember to take off your name tags before coming up to the podium so that you will look your best in the photographs. <laughs> Please feel free to get up and, and get more breakfast, even during people's remarks. And finally, please feel free to applaud enthusiastically and show your appreciation for each, re, each award recipient. And now we'll begin with the Presidential Awards for undergraduate students. Lydia Brown, visiting lecturer at the Experimental College, will introduce Carissa Fleury. You got to be awake. It's 8.45 a.m. It's college. We're going to pretend that this means you're supposed to be functional, even though we all know that's a myth and a lie. Um, this morning, I am excited and honored to present and help in presenting this award for civic life uh, to Carissa Fleury, who I first met this past fall when I was teaching in the X College, so I also don't know anything about Tufts and got lost coming here and was thinking, building with columns. Well, a lot of them have columns. So there's another uh, dilemma. But at the X College, I had the pleasure of meeting Tufts students, mostly for the first time, and learning just what exciting intellectual and political and personal contributions many Tufts students make in the classroom. We spent a semester critically examining what disability is in society and how disability is implicated in and connected to other social issues of personal and political importance, issues that Carissa has consistently committed herself to on and off this campus. As a student leader here with Indict Tufts, which is the Black Lives Matter chap chapter on this campus, seeking to challenge racist police violence, mostly targeting black and brown people. T Carissa exemplifies what it means to practice working towards civic life, recognizing that if a, a principle of civic life honors the whole person, and that the whole person includes aspects of marginalized or targeted identity that are often not uplifted in the classroom. Carissa exemplifies this work outside of Tufts campus, through her work in the past at the Welcome Project in Somerville, through her work as a mentor to students in local schools through Jumpstart and currently through Bright Horizons, and most importantly, over a period of several years, as a chapter leader and currently a chapter director at an organization called Strong Women, Strong Girls, which provides mentorship and leadership development to young girls of color, particularly black and Latinx children. And in that role, Carissa has, in the past year or two, worked to develop an entirely new curriculum, recognizing that curricula in leadership development programs and community engagement often take a model that 
purports to be of charity based or a model of rescuing or saving somebody, Carissa sought to do work that seeks to empower and uplift the students who are the most impacted at the center of their own lives. And to that end, she helped to develop a curriculum, implement it, and facilitate it through conversations on issues like intersectionality and issues like racial injustice. And for that, I am pleased and honored to know Carissa, who has taken her work um, throughout all of Tufts University, and I'm sure for the rest of her life, beyond the classroom, beyond the paper she wrote, which I was very proud of, on the school to prison pipeline impacting disabled students of color. And it is my pleasure and my honor to present this award to you. Thank you, Carissa. Jay Savetti, the head football coach, will introduce Alexander Kim. Good morning, everyone. There we go. That's good. We, we've actually been up uh, down. The, the guys are actually down the weight room right now. They've been there since seven. So I, I am I am wide awake. Uh, Alex and I uh, last night spent the night with some of our alums uh, in Boston. And uh, we were deciding a little bit later last night that the scheduling was a little difficult, but Alex, Alex kept me motivated and to follow, uh, to follow the, the, the previous uh, award winner. Congratulations to you and, and to everyone else. Thanks, President Monaco, and to everyone uh, that takes the time and effort to recognize uh, the students that are here and the exceptional work that they do. It, a reminder for all of us who work here um, how fortunate and lucky we are to be a part of this community and uh, get an opportunity to recognize um, and the many facets that our kids um, influence this community and, and our culture and uh, our lives. So uh, it's, it's an honor to be able to introduce Alex to you. You know, as a football coach, obviously, st statistically, I'll, I'll go through the beginnings and, and the easy things that are obvious about Alex. For, first and foremost, Alex is from California. And uh, this morning, I, I had to kind of rewrite my whole talk because his mom was supposed to be here. She got bumped off a red-eye flight last night from California. Um, so she, she is, we, we, we were going to FaceTime, but I said it was recorded, so we're going to get this to Mrs. Kim. Um, but uh, she's, she's a proud mom, was trying to, thought she was on. One more person uh, came on right before her, but she was at the airport, sent Alex a text, and um, we're thinking about her. But, uh, you know, one of the things you'll learn about Alex is his family being from California and, and, his, and his siblings. Uh, you know, that, that trip, obviously, for Saturdays, even though it's four home games for us uh, in, in the fall, uh, we're, we're, we're there for pretty much all of them, uh, you know, and, and Alex learned a great deal and, and, uh, about life and about civic duty at home first and foremost. His father's a, a, a police officer uh, in, in, in the Los Angeles, Oakland area, and, uh, you know, was instilled with, with a, a lot of core values in, in terms of how to, how to treat people, how to, how to um, engage yourself in your community in as many ways possible. Uh, and obviously how to, how to lead and, and be someone in your community that, that sets a standard and, um, you know, holds other people to those standards and expectations. And, um, you know, the, the Kims are tremendous people. I wish they could have been here, but uh, obviously we're, we're thinking about them. Um, just some things about Alex. Alex is a, uh, a, a three-year starter for us on the football team, played offensive line, although in the last uh, about four months he's, he's lost about 40 pounds, uh, you know. We've made an initiative uh, in the in the NESCAC. I'm, I'm not sure anybody here is aware, but there's an initiative to uh, try to get student athletes, in particular offensive and defensive linemen, to lose weight after they've gained weight while they've been here. So I'm a product of the past being a former NESCAC player who did not lose the weight. <laughs> so Alex's civic duty towards the uh, medical community here is he's he's listening and trying his best. So thanks, Alex, for that and for making Coach Vetti not look as good as you do. So. Um, 
Just some things again about Alex. Alex has been a, a, a Dean's List student here for almost every semester but the first one because I think that's the only one you can't. He's a 353 engineering student here, uh, minoring in engineering management. Uh, you know, he's been involved in a number of projects, uh, you know, the ecological improvement project, the amusement park ride design team, uh, was a part of the uh, self-powered car team for a while. Um, in terms of some of the other things that, that he's done uh, within our community, um, you know, he, he's been a, a huge part of the redesign and efforts of our student athletic advisory committee. Uh, he is a vice president of, of that group and really has spent a lot of time and effort along with the other leadership group to redefine and, and reestablish the, the aspects of that group and the impact that they can have for our student athletes here on campus and has done a great job. Uh, he's also been actively involved in the Big Brother program. Uh, he's helped us over the course of the years develop our community service project. We have you know, three facets of our program and our culture that we focus in on. And, we expect ourselves to be champions. Obviously, as the football coach here and with the president and everybody in the room, we, we, we would love to win championships and there's an expectation to win championships. But uh, for those of you who aren't aware of where our program was when I became the head coach, uh, we had the longest active losing streak in the nation, right? We had lost 31 straight games. And um, Alex Kim and his seniors came in here uh, and as freshmen, they were 0 and 8. As sophomores, they were 4 and 4. As juniors, they were 6 and 2. And as seniors, they're 7 and 1. Um, <laughs> And, and during all that time, you know, the other facets, obviously, of, of, our, of our program is we expect to be champions in the community. And as I explained uh, in, in the classroom, sorry, as I explained, as for, for Alex's academic success, he was always a leader there, a three-year member of the NESCAC all-academic team, uh, you know, w was a guy that came late to practice and left early because as an engineering student, as you guys know, scheduling can be really difficult. Um, but he always gave everything that he could. And uh, one of my favorite memories of Alex, uh, just to paint the picture of the type of person he is and his commitment, not just to the team, but to, to his teammates, to football, to his academic life. So every Tuesday is the day we, we run sprints. And we have this hill that we run sprints on. And Alex had a class at, what, 6, 615, 615 class? And he knew that he would miss sprints. So every day before he left the field, he would run down to the hill and he would run these sprints by himself while the rest of the team was practicing just so that he could give his commitment. And that, that's always an amazing lasting memory and a simple thought and I think example. That's not something I ever asked him to do. That's just something he felt was, was right. And I think that would carry over into all the other things about Alex that, that people don't see. Sure, statistically, he was, he was a great football player, um, you know, did an amazing job in, in changing uh, the, the, the way our football team uh, had success on Saturdays, but it's all the other parts to it that you don't know about. It's his passion, it's his loyalty, uh, it's his disciplined behavior and decisions that he made. Um, you know, he, he, he's someone who, who I trust, his teammates trust, and anybody in his environment that's been around him trusts. Uh, he's someone who's committed to excellence. Uh, you know, everything that he decides to do and wants to do, um, it's, it's to make himself better, the people around him better, which I think speaks volumes to this award um, and to everybody that's sitting in this room. And at the end of the day, there's one thing about Alex Kim that uh, is near and dear to my heart and something I greatly appreciate. Obviously, everybody assumes big, big offensive lineman, mean guy, you know, you know, you know tough guy, all that. But he, he he's probably has the biggest heart. He's someone who cares immensely about um, about people, right? He cares about the success of not just his teammates, but everybody here on campus. He's always someone who I think goes the extra mile to make sure that people know that, that he appreciates what they do and that he's thankful for those opportunities. Uh, you know, he's, he's always that guy that I've had numerous people say, you know, how much they appreciate um, how kind he is and how he goes out of his way to make those efforts. And personally for me, Alex, I, I just would like to thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, it's an absolute honor to have you here and uh, congratulations. <laughs> Now Jim Glazer, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, will introduce Benya Kraus. Well, it is my great pleasure to uh, present this award in recognition to Benya Kraus. 
I am not actually Benya's nominator. Professor Richard Eichenberg was the nominator, and he is away, and he would have normally had this, this honor, um, but he asked me to channel him. And so if you could just imagine me a little taller and with a furry beard, uh, then uh, you can imagine me as him, and I will start off as him and end up as me. So here I am as Professor Eichenberg. <laughs> I am delighted to recommend Benya Krause for the President's Award for Civic Life. I have known Benya since the spring of 2015, and I have taught her in two courses. I recognized her extraordinary talent and skills immediately, so I hired her to work as my research assistant and editor for an important series of papers and a book that I am writing. Benya immediately stood out in my classroom. It was clear to me that she was an intellectual leader. I distinctly remember our first class in gender politics the following fall. She addressed a topic we were discussing by drawing on her experience as a volunteer assisting sex workers in Thailand. In that first comment, she displayed the qualities of engagement, intellectual depth, and leadership that she brings to all of her endeavors. I could tell by looking around the room that she was making an impact. Benya's broader academic record is stellar a 3.80 GPA in international relations. She is truly one of Tufts' academic stars. As concerns civic engagement and community involvement, the only way to describe Benya's list of endeavors is breathtaking. Let me give you but a taste. She was an intern at the Oslo Freedom Forum, conducting research on health and human rights with an emphasis on Ebola and HIV AIDS, and writing op-eds and speeches on women and security for the leadership of the organization. She was a public policy intern for the Constitution Project, conducting research on issues involving juvenile justice reform, the militarization of police, and the constitutionality of Oklahoma's death penalty processes. For the past two years, she has been the state legislative coordinator for Amnesty International USA in Boston, coordinating uh, legislative lobbying actions across Massachusetts for Amnesty International human rights campaigns. She's going to be a youth delegate to the 2017 International Council meeting, extraordinary. Closer to home, she has been involved in the Tufts Community Union Senate as the Diversity and Community Affairs Officer, the Chair of the Culture, Ethnicity, and Community Affairs Committee, and member of the Allocations Board. It's not just that she filled these important roles on the Senate, but her effectiveness and passion led her, led her to election as president of the Senate for next year. She's an extraordinary student and leader, and I have such great admiration for her. Okay, I'm now shaving and <laughs> shrinking and morphing back to myself. I would note that I first encountered Benya because Lee Coffin, the Dean of Admissions, brought her to my attention. I often would ask Lee to tell me who are the amazing students in the pool, who can I expect to come in and wow us, and Lee brought Benya to my attention even before she got here, and then she got here, and there was a, an event, I think it was for the Arts and Sciences Advisors, and Benya uh, was asked by Lee Coffin to come and recite some slam poetry, which, um, to use Professor Eichenberg's language, was breathtaking. I followed her over the years, and when Lee left Tufts, uh, and we needed a student to sit on the search committee to find a new dean of admissions, who I note is here, Karen Richardson, where are you? We did really well. <laughs> I asked Benya to join the search committee and to represent the student body on that search committee, and she did. I couldn't have asked for a stronger representative. When Benya spoke, people listened. When our candidates met our student, they were supremely impressed. Very important to us as we were trying to recruit a new dean. In all of my dealings with Benya, I have been so impressed with her confidence, grace, and sophistication. She's a fabulous student leader. She's a fabulous student. And I'm so looking forward to working with her in the next year and I look forward to seeing all that she will accomplish. I know that we, Tufts University, the 
Tisch College will be very happy to be associated with Benya as she makes a difference in this world. Congratulations, Benya. <laughs> And now Shaluni Tendulkar, the lecturer in the Community Health Department, will introduce Kristen Mujica. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was hoping I would get a louder response than all your previous presenters. Um, I am so pleased to be here um, on behalf of all the faculty and staff in the Department of Community Health. Uh, to introduce you to Kristen. And I, I must say, a lot of our previous pre presenters were commenting on how early it is today and how surprising it is that everybody's here and awake. And I'm actually especially surprised that Kristen is here and awake. Um, and not because this is not a terrific honor that she would wake up for, but she's had actually a lot going on this week. So in addition to receiving this honor, Kristen moved. Has anybody moved recently? It takes a lot of effort. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So Kristen moved apart. She also adopted a puppy this week. Um, and then um, the, the, the last thing is that she happens to also be defending her senior honors thesis today in two hours. And so I'm amazed she's here and that she's awake, but I am so thrilled to have the opportunity on behalf of our entire department to recognize her. Um, without a doubt, Kristen is a rare student. She has a humanitarian spirit and a passionate commitment to social justice and health equity for marginalized communities. She is a first-generation college student who has taken every opportunity to advocate for students from similar backgrounds and those with similar life experiences. She has been actively involved in creating a multicultural environment in which race, ethnicity, religion, <clears throat> Class, gender, and sexual orientation do not hinder students from full participation in the Tufts community. Um, Kristen joined the President's Sexual Assault, Assault Task Force in 2013 because of her dedication to women's sexual health. Through the Prevention and Education Working Group, under the supervision of President Monaco, she contributed to the development of a plan for increasing awareness about sexual assault on campus and compiling and advertising information about av available resources at Tufts and beyond. Kristen is also strongly committed to working to improve the health and well-being of Latinas, particularly among those who identify as LGBTQ. She has been a leader in Team Q, a group that facilitates open discussion and group dialogues about situations facing LGBTQ students. Perhaps among her proudest contributions to the Tufts community was the establishment of the Anti-Racism Task Force, in partnership with the Chief Diversity Officer, Mark Brimhall Vargas, and LGBT Center Director, Nino Testa. Together, they collected data to assess knowledge, attitudes, and behaviors regarding race relations among Greek organizations on campus. Since their departure, Kristen has persevered in this work and has engaged other Tufts administrators to create a training that promotes learning and self-awareness about racism and microaggressions, as well as to promote strategies to help reduce these issues within student-led organizations. Mm -hmm. The extent of Kristen's community service and engagement is truly exceptional, and these are just some examples of her engagement. I do have to say, as I was writing this, um, it was four pages long, and then I was reminded that I only have two minutes to speak, and so I tried to pick and choose um, the accomplishments that I wanted to highlight um, in the short amount of time that we have. It is difficult to imagine how she has found the time and the energy to maintain such a high level of commitment to service while balancing the requirements of two major fields of study, community health and clinical psychology. 
She embodies all of the characteristics that are valued with this award. And the thing that amazes me the most about her is she does that, but with an incredible amount of humility. Um, and so in closing, I am proud and honored to congratulate both her and all the incredibly deserving award recipients today, who happen, by the way, two of them happen to be from the Department of Community Health, which I'm actually very, very proud of. So thank you. <laughs> And now my colleagues, uh, Maggie McMurrow, who's the program coordinator at Tisch College, Sarah Allred, the Tisch Scholar Program Administrator, uh, and inviting back Shaluni Ten uh, Tendulkar, will introduce Michael Wang. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to President Monaco and Dean Salamont for the opportunity to honor our students today. And thank you to my fellow co-nominators, Sarah Allred and Shalini Tendulkar. Today, I have the honor of introducing Michael Yifei Wang. Michael has been involved with Tisch College since he was admitted to the highly selective Tisch Scholars, Pro Tisch Scholars Program in January of 2014. Since then, he has been a fixture in our building and has been involved in some way with, I'm pretty sure, almost all of our student programs at Tisch College. I met Michael when he applied for the Tisch Summer Fellows Program in 2015 and was accepted as a fellow at the New York Academy of Medicine for the summer. During those 10 weeks in New York City, Michael didn't just complete his work and go home. He made the absolute most of his time there. He completed over 40 informational interviews in the 10 weeks and got to know anyone that he even had the slightest interest in their profession or their experience. Since then, through the Tisch Scholars Program and on his own, Michael has worked at many local communi community organizations, particularly in Boston's Chinatown, where he has found a second home and committed to learning about addressing issues of the Asian immigrant and Asian American community in Boston. He has made meaningful connections with community members and organizers as he has led and worked on issues such as voter registration, protesting gentrification, and engaging in a comprehensive health needs survey of the community. Giles Lee, the executive director of the Boston Chinatown Neighborhood Center, said about Michael, and I quote, I believe in Michael's ability and potential as a leader because of his unwavering professionalism and dedication and trust him to play his role with integrity in any situation. During his time at BCNC, Michael has demonstrated a desire to grow within the community and has increased his involvement with other community-oriented organizations in Chinatown and beyond. He has demonstrated willingness to lead and a sense of adventure for engaging in the unknown. Last summer, again as a Tisch Summer Fellow, Michael worked at the Massachusetts Attorney General's Fair Labor Division, where he worked at the state level on employee protection and minimum wage and hour laws, among many other issues. Michael's supervisor, Cindy Mark, who is here today, the chair of the Fair Labor Division, said of Michael, I have supervised scores of interns, legal and college, as an attorney for more than 20 years, and Michael is among the best few. This year, Michael has been supporting the recruitment and interview process of the Tisch Scholars Program, working to identify a new cohort in the program that he has worked so hard in throughout his years at Tufts. Starting this summer, Michael will be working for World Teach at a school in the rural Hunan province of China. Although I'm sure he could have selected from a multitude of other offers from all of the connections that he's made over the years, the roots that he started to grow here at Tufts and Tisch College will continue to grow there as he integrates himself into a new community. 
I've never seen Michael without a huge smile on his face, including when he ran by me on the Boston Marathon route with the Tufts team a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> we will miss his intelligence, humor, leadership, and commitment to social justice, among many other things. On behalf of all of us at Tisch, we are so proud of you, and you are so deserving of this award. Congratulations. And Sarah Allred, Sarah Allred and Grace Deleuzen, lecturer in the English department, will introduce Aniso Waterhouse. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to start by saying thank you to President Monaco and Dean Salamont for the opportunity to honor these amazing students, um, and congratulations to all of this year's uh, recipients of uh, the Presidential Awards. So I have the great pleasure of introducing Anissa Waterhouse to you today. I met Anissa during her first year at Tufts when she applied to the Tisch Scholars Program, a multi-year leadership development program focused on civic and community engagement and social justice in the Tufts host communities and beyond of which she has been a participant along with Michael for the past four years. Anissa has made an impression on many people throughout her time at Tufts, and I'd like to point out that several people nominated her for this award, including Christina Danahy and Robin Coyne, uh, who are both faculty at the Josiah Quincy Upper School in Boston's Chinatown, Rob Mack, the Associate Dean for Student Success and Advising and Director of Tufts BLAST program, of which Anissa is a participant, uh, Katrina Moore, Director of Tufts Africana Center, and Grace Toulousen, Faculty at Tufts and Instructor for the Tisch Scholar Seminar. So I'd like to start by sharing the myriad of ways that Anissa has engaged, been engaged in civic and community engagement work on and off campus. Through the Tisch Scholars Program her sophomore year, Anissa worked to empower and support individuals and families at LIFT, an anti-poverty organization, and continued with the organization through the following summer as a Tisch Summer Fellow. Last summer, Anissa participated in Tisch Summer Fellows International Program with Teach in Ghana. This year, for her scholar project, she's worked at the Josiah Quincy Upper School, advising and supporting seniors with their community service learning projects as a graduation requirement of the International Baccalaureate Program there. And I'm very happy to share that she'll be continuing her work at JQUS next year through the College Advising Corps. Additionally, as a younger student, Anissa was involved in campus activism, specifically around the Black Lives Matter movement. And she has represented Tufts and Tisch College at many conferences, focusing on a range of topics, including social emotional learning, moral education, and first generation students of color. I am in awe of Anissa's commitment to the Tisch Scholars Program and her efforts to improve the program, not only for her own benefit, but more so to make the experience more inclusive and more meaningful for years of scholars to come. As a younger scholar, Anissa experienced aspects of the program and community that were not productive or beneficial to her and others. And rather than withdrawing, Anissa dove into the hard work of changing the program from within. During her junior year, she helped to implement significant changes to the program, as well as recruit our newest cohort. And this year, she's served as the teaching assistant for the program's foundation course titled Civic Identity, Reflection, and Action, which is taught by my colleague and co-nominator, Grace Toulousem. In this role, Anissa is a mentor as well as a liaison between students and faculty and has helped to ease the transition of new students into the program. In addition to serving the program formally as a teaching assistant, Anissa also embraces a more informal role as mentor and convener. 
I would describe her as the heart of the Tisch Scholars Program, as she gives much of herself to connect with and support her scholar peers and the new students in the program. She gives advice, asks great questions, and has on more than one occasion invited all 40 plus students to her home for dinner. Anissa cares for and about her fellow Tufts students, especially her Tisch Scholar peers. Anissa's ability to build and nurture relationships has benefited the class environment and many individual Tisch scholars. In my one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of the students at the end of this semester, many shared how Anissa's actions, which include everything from leading guided meditations in class, facilitating conversations on difficult topics such as power and identity with her peers, hosting dinners in her suite, meeting scholars for a meal in the dining halls, sending email, Facebook, or text check-ins when someone misses class, and many more examples. Um, these actions all contributed to a positive experience and to the building of a cohesive cohort this year. As the year ends, I have found myself on more than one occasion asking, what am I going to do next year without Anissa? Uh, and although we will miss her dearly, Anissa truly is leaving behind a legacy at Tufts and at Tisch College specifically which looks like increased intentionality in creating spaces for students to grow and thrive as they experience the scholars program and work to explore and create their own definitions of what civic life means to them. Thank you, Anissa, for bettering the lives of many around you, including myself. The seventh and final undergraduate presidential award recipient, unfortunately, uh, could not be here. Uh, but Andre Newland is worthy of our acknowledging his achievements, and so I'd like to highlight a, a few of them, if I may. Andre was an inaugural member of the Tufts STEM Ambassadors Program, an initiative of Tisch College and the School of Engineering Center for STEM Diversity. The program trains and sends tough students to local schools to help get students, especially those from groups underrepresented in the STEM fields, excited about college and science. Andre later served as a peer leader in the program and in 2015 was selected as one of two ambassador leaders. Andre led the community partnerships component of the STEM ambassadors program, engaging with teachers at local high schools and coordinating the content and schedule of presentations. He also participates in Tufts Jumbo Code, and as a leader of the Peace Corps Recipes Project, he has developed a database and a mobile app for Peace Corps members all over the world to connect and share nutritional recipes. When he graduates next month, Andre will start his professional career at the tech company Foursquare in New York where he plans to continue elevating the civic role of scientists and engineers. Andre will accept his award next week from President Monaco and from his two nominators, Kristen Finch and Shirley Mark, but let's give him a round of applause as we recognize him <laughs> along with his peers. And now we move on to graduate students. Uh, Cynthia Lavelle Webster, Professor and Associate Chair of Clinical Sciences at the Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine, will introduce Sarah Crane. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here and bring um, uh, it's a cheer from the veterinary campus. How many people here have animal people in their lives? Raise your hand. Okay, 
a fair number of them. Well, then you'll appreciate some of the work that Sarah's done. It's going to be centered around STEM and around shelter work. Um, I'm here um, not so much in my capacity as the associate chair or professor. I'm here because I do a lot of STEM outreach work. Um, I coordinate a lot of it, um, and that is where I got to know Sarah and her outreach efforts very well. Um, Sarah is a veterinarian, and she came to us from the University of Minnesota, where she pursued uh, upper level training. So she is a board certified internist in small animal medicine. And something I didn't even consider in her application was how much she serves as a role model for the rest of our house officers by coming over into the clinic and helping us, particularly with our dialysis service. That was above and beyond what was even in her application. So she came to us to pursue a PhD, and she's doing a PhD in our regenerative medicine lab with one of her other sponsors, which is Dr. Andy Hoffman, who couldn't be here today. Um, but she's really standing up here because she has an impressive array of volunteerism. And that centers, as I said, in two areas. One is in shelter medicine. So she works mostly on her weekends when she has time. It doesn't have to be in the lab. Um, uh, volunteering for several shelters, um, the Merrimack River Valley Shelter, the MSPA Nevins Farm, and also working for our own local uh, Tufts uh, Feral Cat, Cat Clinic. And she offers expert advice there's probably not too many board certified internists that are working in the shelter, so she really is an expert. Um, and then, even though she's an internist, she does some surgery, so I guess she's keeping those surgical skills up, um, helping to uh, spay and neuter. So preparing animals to be adopted. Um, but I can speak um, most clearly about her STEM work. So. At Tufts, we believe uh, that animal-based content can inspire students to learn STEM, particularly engineering. And we've actually been working with the people here at the CEO to develop curricu curriculum um, to bring into local schools or to use on campus to inspire kids, particularly girls, to be interested in engineering by doing things like telling them that we have a paralyzed dachshund and they have to design a cart to make the dog walk again, or we have a dog who lost his leg to osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer, and they have to make a prosthetic leg. So we love doing these things, and Sarah is incredibly enthusiastic and in helping out with these. And she has worked both on campus at our Blackstone Valley STEM conference, as well as in our Adventures of Met Veterinary Medicine uh, to deliver these curricula. And again, sacrificed her time, a lot of times on weekends, to come to um, uh, Girl Scouts events uh, um, and women in science events, men in science events, which are sponsored by the Central Mass STEM Council, um, to deliver these um, events. And I guess I want to use something that's a little bit trite, but it really fits. Sometimes you can find quotes that really work for the uh, situation, and this one does. This is from Maya Angelou, and I'm sure everybody has heard this in the room. I've never learned, I've learned that people will never forget, will forget what you said and forget what you do, but they will never forget how you make them feel. And that's what Sarah's all about. Um, her infectious enthusiasm, her empathy, and her desire to give of herself is truly inspiring. It's inspiring to me, and it's made me push the boundaries from an incredibly busy schedule to develop these STEM programs. Um, and I'm sure she's inspired the kids, and it gives me great honor um, for her to get this award today. Thank you very much.
Richard Lerner, the Bergstrom Chair in Applied Developmental Science and the Director of the Institute for Applied Research and Youth Development, will introduce Elise Harris from the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Rich. Thank you, Dean Solomon. Well, I'm delighted and honored uh, to introduce Elise Harris. Ms. Harris is almost Dr. Harris. She's in the last year of her doctoral training in the Elliott Pearson Department of Child Study and Human Development, and I'm privileged to serve as her academic advisor and her dissertation chair. Elise Harris has been and continues to be a campus leader for undergraduate and graduate students, as well as for faculty and staff, in transforming our community to be more fully embracing of diversity and inclusion. She is both an intellectual leader and a leader of engaged citizenship in my lab, in my department, across our campus, and nationally. Her research has provided both theoretical and empirical contributions to such topics as the role of institutional racism and critical consciousness in the lives of youth of color, as well as the development of entrepreneurship among youth of color. Her contributions to the Elliott Pearson Department of Child Study and Human Development include her role as student representative to our department's doctoral planning committee, where she helps students and faculty understand and appropriately address issues of equity, diversity, and inclusion. In turn, her university-wide contributions have enabled Tufts students to realize their aspirations to have culturally deep and meaningful experiences through their Tufts education. For instance, her work as a program coordinator in the Bridge to Liberal Arts at Tufts, the BLAST program, provided professional and career development support for junior and senior students and contributed to the development and execution of professional preparation workshops. <clears throat> Excuse me. She was the co-leader of the Graduate Women of Color Forum at Tufts, where she developed programming and organized events to build solidarity among women of color who are graduate students at Tufts University. Moreover, as a graduate intern at the Tufts Africana Center, Ms. Harris provided leadership and program development and served as a mentor to students. At the same time, she managed and edited the weekly Africana Center newsletter, The Scoop. In addition, she served as a facilitator for the Black Women's Collective within the Africana Center. She was also a facilitator of the Africana Center Freshman Forum, where she developed content and facilitated a day-long forum with workshops that focused on academic success, identity, and race with first-year students who identify as part of the African diaspora. Ms. Harris was also a leader of the planning of a December 2016 teaching at Tufts, which was a means for drawing on rich intellectual histories of experience and knowledge to consider ongoing struggle, resistance, and resilience. Finally, Ms. Harris has also changed the direction of scholarship and application in her field of study through her, through her contributions to the Society for Research on Adolescent Development. This is the leading developmental science scholarly organization in the world for this field. At its 2015 National Convention in Baltimore, she organized and led Black Lives Matter, Can Adolescent Researchers Contribute to Racial Justice? This workshop brought scholars and community leaders together to discuss how developmental science has been historically and is currently applied to produce both positive but also deeply problematic outcomes for black youth in particular. This event was the single most well-attended and most highly evaluated workshop in the history of this scholarly organization. As a consequence of this leadership, Ms. Harris has become a visible national spokesperson for the role that developmental science can play in contributions to the well-being of diverse young people. As well, she has become nationally visible as a person whose vision and compassion inspire citizens throughout our nation's communities to coalesce in the service of enhancing social justice. To say that Elise Harris brings positive visibility to and admiration of Tufts 
university to the national stage regarding these vital issues is only to recount an empirical fact. She has done and continues to do enormously important work in transforming civil society and American democracy for the diverse young people of our nation. Join me in congratulating Elise. Nicole Holland, Assistant Professor at the School of Dental Medicine, will introduce Alexis Irby from the School of Dental Medicine. Good morning. Oh, you guys have had enough coffee, I guess. Please feel free to, feel free to get more. So such an honor to be able to um, recognize Mrs. Alexis Irby for this incredible presidential award. Um, I have known Alexis since she entered the dental school. Uh, we both started at the dental school at the same time four years ago, me as faculty, Alexis as a student. Um, and in that time, I've known Alexis throughout various capacities, both inside and outside the classroom. Um, Always a leader throughout, she came into the dental school with a passion for service and, and outreach and leadership, and that was clear. And it's been such a pleasure to watch that be refined and tested and her grow and blossom through all the roles that she's had. Um, so we only, we were told about two minutes so we could run through her CV, but I think some of the biggest pieces, and she's wearing the SNDA pin now, is her role within SNDA. So for those of you who don't know, um, SNDA is the Student National Dental Association, which is a national organization whose mission really is to improve uh, the oral health of underserved communities, as well as to enhance the educational opportunities of um, underrepresented minorities within oral health. Um, Alexis embodies this. Uh, at Tufts, I think it's representation of Tufts and kind of the goals that we have here within civic duty and civic life, but we have such an active SNDA chapter at our school. Um, I can tell you from being a student to being a trainee at other schools and now being a faculty member at Tufts that our chapter is truly active on the national stage here locally, regionally, and nationally. And Alexis has been a really big part of that. We also have some other students who are part of SNDA here at the table who will come up and take the picture, please, <laughs> with us. Um, but so within that program at SNDA at Tufts, what specifically we're doing is doing a lot of programming. And this is student run, so a lot of programming involving um, creating relationships and fostering and nurturing relationships with community members, bringing middle and high school and college students into the dental school to expose them to dentistry as a career, being mentors to those students, mentors to the students that are coming up under them. Um, the question here, even from Dr. Holloway, who's the current faculty advisor of the SNDA, is you know, how do we get more students interested in dentistry? And uh, Alexis embodies that, embodies that questions, embodies that um, action in order to do that. So not only has she been active on the local level here at Tufts, um, she also, and this is the piece that kind of highlights uh, her just drive and initiative and will. She, on the national stage as well, um, has, has grown up in the leadership role, so she served as uh, the representative to the parent organization, the NDA, uh, their board of trustees, then subsequently served as the president-elect to the SNDA and is currently serving as the national president um, of the SNDA, which means, to put it in context, that she presi presides over all of the SNDA chapters across all of the dental schools in the country. Um, so easily over a thousand members with that mission. So please congratulate her. Um, and does it with this smile, 
um, does it with such grace. It's just unbelievable. So I'm always inspired by what she does, how she encourages and mentors the students that come behind her. Um, what I can say is, again, it's more than titles. It's more than busyness. Anyone knows you try to get in con to, uh, communication with Alexis. It's, it's, she's busy. She's on the run. She's doing something. But beyond that, she engages with um, her colleagues. She engages with those who are coming behind her, those who laterally mentorship. Um, with true, genuine integrity. And for that, um, I just, I have so much to say about her, I'm gonna leave it there, but her leadership style, it's been such an honor and a pleasure to see it grow over the course of her four years here, and I cannot wait, as a fellow dentist, to very soon call you Dr. Irby, very soon call you my colleague and friend. So congratulations to you. Jerry Sheehan, the Executive Associate Dean at the Fletcher School, will introduce Samar Karimji from the Fletcher School. With me is uh, Katie Mulroy. Katie is our Director of Student Affairs and is also my uh, co-nominator with Amar. Uh, the first thing I would want to say is congratulations to all the recipients, both uh, those who have been up here and those who are yet to uh, come up here. Um, this is a great ceremony because uh, civic life and engagement in one's community is core to the mission of Fletcher. And when I look out and I see all these recipients, my first thought is, boy, particularly for those of you who have not gone on to study beyond your undergraduate uh, degree, that you might want to think about this school a few steps away um, <laughs> as you consider uh, graduate study. Uh, in limited time, there's no way I can capture uh, everything that I would want to say about Amar. Indeed, when I drafted my first set of remarks, they were several pages long, so I had to do some serious redrafting after I received the note yesterday, about two minutes. Uh, so I'm going to say just a very few things about Amar, but I hope they give you some sense of what a special person he is. Uh, first, he's been elected in both of his two years to our seven-member student council. Uh, and he was key over the past two years in suggesting a number of improvements in the functioning of the Student Council. I'm not going to list those, but what I will say is that those suggestions, the sum of those suggestions, transform the Council from being a strong but relatively reactive group into being a proactive and cohesive group. Second, uh, he is a leader of our social investment group a student-run impact investing organization that provides advisory services for socially focused startups. Uh, there are several, but I'll just mention one, a locally sourced farm share company that donates to a food bank. Third, he's highly engaged in activities beyond the university, particularly with respect to his native Pakistan. I'm not going to talk about his work with Teach for Pakistan. I'm not going to talk about his work, work with the nonprofit Acumen Pakistan. But I will talk about his advocacy efforts to end the practice of female uh, genital mutilation, a practice in which his religious community engages. Amar has written articles and been outspoken in his community uh, to convince men that FGM is not a woman's issue, it is a human rights issue. Among other things, he's appeared with his sister on NPR's This American Life to raise awareness, and he has spoken at the United Nations on the vital role that men must play in ending FGM. Fourth, uh, and I'm not gonna get away without saying this, um, 
I'm not going to let you get away without hearing this, I should say, Amar. He's not uh, shy about sharing his opinions. <laughs> Yet he has the ability uh, to push his community to improve while still listening respectfully to others. Now, there are a number of examples I could give over the past two years. I want to give just one example in this case. He has made time-consuming and effective, I want to underline and effective, efforts to improve programming at the school on diversity and inclusion outside the classroom and perhaps more importantly inside the classroom to increase faculty awareness of situations which could have been better handled by the instructor. And finally, I can't stress enough what a good and caring person he is. Uh, and again, I have several examples from his time at the school. I want to give just one though. For our Asia Culture Night, uh, he created a moving video interviewing the many students in our community who come from India and Pakistan. And the video showed the commonalities of these two nations as opposed to the differences which the media so often portrays. So Amar embodies community leadership, service, and engagement. I'm delighted that uh, he is one of our two uh, honorees today from Fletcher. He's a great guy. We expect great things of him. Congratulations. Another Tisch, a Tisch colleague, Jen Graham Morrissey, who's the Tisch College Community Service Learning Coordinator at the School of Medicine, will introduce Rebecca Lee. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Becky Lee spent every Thursday morning of her first two years of medical school volunteering. Now, in this crowd, that might not sound particularly remarkable, but Becky's volunteer work wasn't exactly typical. Every Thursday, in any weather, Becky, Becky accompanied Dr. Jim O'Connell and Dr. David Munson, one of her co-nominators, doing street rounds. Now, we're all familiar with the sort of old-fashioned idea of doctors doing house calls. This is a similar concept, except that these patients do not have houses. Many of them may not even utilize the services of shelters. Instead, the Boston Healthcare for the Homeless Street Team seeks out the most vulnerable members of our community to attend to their medical needs. The consistency of Becky's commitment on Thursdays meant that those patients developed a relationship of trust with Becky, which often enabled her to connect them to other medical and social services. Those trusting relationships made her work both rewarding but also emotionally challenging. Whereas we might hear a news story about a homeless man dying of hypothermia on a winter night, Becky would have gotten word that it was Sam. She knew his story. She mourned his passing. Those Thursday morning street rounds were just the beginning for Becky. Becky took over leadership of our Healthcare for the Homeless Student Club. She recruited other medical students to volunteer at the St. Francis House Foot Care Clinic. She also organized our first ever Health and Human Rights Week, a now annual week of events highlighting health disparity issues in our local community. As a service learning peer leader, she mentored other students in the development of their community-based project. And this is just a sampling of the ways that Becky's personal impact of directly volunteering on the street team became amplified because of her educating, engaging, and inspiring her classmates. Her, her impact on medical students goes beyond Tufts. When the bridge to the Long Island shelter closed and the opioid epidemic was taking hold in our state, Becky convened students from all four medical schools in Massachusetts to found the Student Coalition on Addiction. They've organized rallies, petitions, 
and even collaborated with Governor Charlie Baker and Commissioner of Public Health Monica Burrell to implement new legislation. They also worked to develop curricular changes at all four medical schools in Massachusetts, ensuring that future physicians are better prepared to address the opioid crisis. Becky has had an enormous impact in so many ways, as a volunteer, a healer, an educator, an advocate, and a leader. I'm thrilled to share that she was matched at her top choice medicine in family, or top choice residency in family medicine at Greater Lawrence Family Health Center, a program. <laughs> it's a program that's renowned for training physician leaders in the care of the underserved. I'm relieved that Becky will not be far, and I'm overjoyed that she'll continue educating tough students, but now as a faculty member at Lawrence where her, our students do clinical rotations. Becky, I hope you know there is so much more I could say. On a personal note, it has been a privilege and inspiration to work with you throughout my time at Tufts. I told you I might cry. <laughs> and it is my honor to present you with the Presidential Award for Civic Life. Katie Mulroy, the Associate Director of Student Affairs at the Fletcher School, will introduce the second Fletcher School uh, awardee, Anga Dwi Martha, along with, along with Jerry Sheehan. Thank you, everyone, for letting us present not one but two Fletcher students. We are thrilled to be here. And it's my pleasure to introduce Anga to you. Um, Anga has really stood out from a young age. He was awarded uh, the Young Leaders um, for Indonesia by McKinsey and Company in 2011. Um, he served as a youth, youth advocate to the United Nations Population Fund in I Indonesia from 2012 to 2015, and he was the youngest UN personnel in Indonesia when he was only 21. Um, previously, he also served as Indonesian Youth Delegate to the 68th, 69th, and 70th um, session of the UN General Assembly, and that was all before coming to Fletcher. So while at Fletcher, he's been focusing on human security, sustainable development, international negotiation, and conflict resolution. He was a Blakely Fellow in 2015 and focused his fellowship on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals um, into the National Development Agenda. At Fletcher, he is incredibly involved, um, even for Fletcher students, which is saying something. He's a co-president of the ASEAN Club. Um, he has um, been involved in and is now co-president of the Ambassadors, our a cappella group. Um, he's very involved in culture nights. He's doing the Fletcher Performing Arts concert, which is tonight at 7 p.m. in Goddard Chapel. So <laughs> should definitely attend that. Um, but he's also managed to stay very involved outside of the Fletcher community. Um, he's worked with Civicus and the UN Major Group for Children and Youth and focused on issues related to youth participation, um, including adolescent health, quality education, youth employment, entrepreneurship, and child marriages. And he's been really instrumental in getting youth, and especially people under 30, a voice within their government. Um, he, you know, has uh, advised the government of Indonesia to position youth participation as an overarching issue of the sustainable development goals at the UN General Assembly. 
Um, and you know that work is only going to continue beyond Fletcher. He plans to further work on Indonesian development um, and serve the government or continue his career in the UN. And all of this sort of runs through his CV and is wonderful, but I think what can't really come across on paper is what a great guy Anga is. He just has an infectious personality. Um, he has just contributed to the fabric of social life at Fletcher in so many ways. Um, he makes people just happier by his presence. I, made, I remember meeting him at orientation. He was one of the first people that I spoke to. He just had this group that was just drawn to him, you know, and it was as if he already kind of was, you know, fit into the community and it was day one and he just was able to welcome people even though he had just arrived as well. And he's a joy to work with. Um, you know, he does so much and he's really humble and I think that's what has impressed me the most about him as well. Um, he always asks how people are doing, always encourages those around him, really celebrates others' accomplishments and is just the embodiment of a servant leader. Um, he puts his full spirit into everything. Um, this includes his work, this includes performing Stevie Wonder um, and belting out that music. Um, and I will truly be sad not to see Anga every day after he leaves, but I have no doubt that he will make his community a better place wherever he goes, and it's my privilege and honor to award him. Last and by, by all means not least, Leopoldo, Leopoldo Correa, the Associate Professor at the School of Dental Medicine, will introduce Lauren Vargas. Well, good morning and congratulations to all of you. Last but not least. <laughs> so um, we were told to present the, um, uh, the candidate in two minutes or, le or less. So I prepared a short version <laughs> and a long version. So allow me to combine both of them so you can know more about, about Lorraine Vargas. So it's a great honor to, um, uh, to present Lorraine. It's my privilege to know Lorraine uh, in dental school. <clears throat> so Lorraine, what makes Lorraine different? Well, Lorraine, she always demonstrates uh, a lot of passion for uh, community health, uh, community service. She is very energetic <clears throat> and always uh, with a positive attitude towards problem solving. She has participated in different community, ser community service and she has led uh, different programs uh, in the Boston area and abroad. So we have a program at TUF, it's called the Global Service Learning. So this program allows dental students to uh, provide free dental services, free dental care abroad. <laughs> so Lorin has uh, organized and traveled to, uh, to other countries to provide these services. So during this time, she has demonstrated the high capability to solve problems arising at the last minute. So I had witnessed several of them. So the important part is that when she detects, when she identifies these issues and find the best uh, way to solve this problem, she always maintains, um, she's stress-free, she always maintains a calm, which she helps other students and people surrounding her to feel, to feel calm. So everything has a solution in the, best, in the best manner. So during these activities, I have witnessed Lorraine's leadership capabilities, so she's a leader, dedication to community service, 
advocacy to oral health, and willingness to help others. Helping others is the characteristic that distinguished Lauren Vargas. She has achieved different goals and participated in many community services. She's, very, she's a very active member of the Hispanic Dental Association. Um, for the last four years, so she has participated within this uh, organization, the Tough Student Hispanic Dental Association. Uh, having such a strong commitment to the organization, she served as president during his senior year. Lorin has traveled to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic during the third and the fourth year to perform dental services along with some other students as part of the Global Service Learning Project. <clears throat> Lorin has a true passion for helping minority populations. She has planned and attended many health fairs and trips to elementary schools to teach the, uh, the community about dentistry and oral hygiene. Last summer, Lauren <clears throat> teach or uh, she mentored for five weeks uh, some uh, high school students from minority backgrounds that were interested in dentistry. So they came to Tough Dental and they met with uh, different students, including Lauren. So she prepared a variety of lectures related to dentistry and answered all their questions and concerns. So Lorraine's most rewarding moment came when uh, one student who was unsure if dentistry you know, was the best choice for, uh, uh, for her. So she decided to choose, she, she decided to pursue dentistry as a career after seeing Lorraine's passion and dedication to, uh, to dentistry. So that was very rewarding. So Lorraine, <clears throat> she plans to complete a general practice residency at Lutheran Hospital in Brooklyn, New York. And I just want to uh, conclude saying that during all this time, during the four years that she has been in uh, dental school, I have witnessed so many different activities as a faculty mentor. So she has always, always put others first. So this is a very nice, uh, peculiar characteristic, so Lorraine. So this is the reason I decided to nominate Lorraine Vargas for the uh, Presidential Award for Civil Life, and I'm confident that Lorraine will continue helping others after graduation and during her lifetime. And will continue advocating for oral health and community service. So let's congratulate and welcome Lorraine to receive the award. Congratulations, Lorraine. This has been a truly inspiring morning. I think an institution expresses what it values by what and whom it chooses to celebrate and honor. And I think this morning speaks to the values of this university in a very, very powerful way. Uh, I congratulate all the winners, their family members, and all of the nominators, and it's now a pleasure to welcome Debbie Kochiever, the Dean of the Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine, to offer some concluding thoughts. Debbie. So first, congratulations again to all of the honorees, all of the nominees. You folks are amazing. Um, I'd also like to call out the families. I know there's families here. There are families who didn't quite make it from California and, and in other places. I can't imagine how proud you are of your, of your students. So congratulations to you and also to all the nominators. Everyone's very busy and so to take time to sit down and write a nomination is why these award ceremonies can happen. So, so thanks to all of you. I'd also like to say to President Monaco and to Dean Salamat, um, thank you because you sustain this program. This is an important piece of Tufts. It's a program that's run for a long time, but every single year, um, I can't make it every single year, but when I come, I never cease to go away inspired and proud to be at Tufts. 
And so as a dean, I actually have the opportunity to publicly talk about why I'm proud to be at Tufts. And one of the most fun times that I get to do that is at Admitted Students Day. So this is after students get their admission to veterinary school. I haven't quite decided some of them, whether they're coming to Tufts or to those other schools. Um, but it's my chance to talk to them about, about why Tufts is special. So you might imagine I start out by saying the health professions at Tufts are great. We have medicine, we have dentistry, we have nutrition, and we have veterinary medicine. We have One Health, which posits that all those three are tied together. So that's, that's a good story. I often mention uh, internationalism. So Fletcher, you make your way into my comments too, but also the fact that we believe that global One Health, animals, people, the environment, are all really important. The third thing I mention, though, really is um, the personality of Tufts around active citizenship and civic life. And so, uh, Alan, if your ears are burning, it's because I call out Tisch College and the fact that very few places have a Tisch College. It is a tremendous asset to the university, and clearly from the achievements that we've heard about this morning, it's a tremendous asset to the students. And so, um, so I think when I, you can always tell when people are listening because the room gets a little quiet. And I can always tell that the admitted students get quiet because they haven't really heard a story like that before. I think it makes Tufts distinctive, and I think it makes us all very proud. It certainly makes me proud. Um, so where should that pride lead? Uh, you have already achieved a great deal. It's almost hard to imagine you could do more than what you've already done. But, but in fact, that's your challenge. And so many of you are graduating. You're going to go on to other parts of your lives. And um, I'd like to personally encourage you to maintain uh, your involvement, to maintain the achievements that you have in civic life. And you're probably thinking, well, I've, I've done that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at this. I'm going to, of course, sustain this. As it turns out, real life sometimes gets in the way of that. And so I encourage you, even as you uh, encounter challenges and you make choices, you balance your life between family and work, um, that you are able to find ways to, in fact, continue, uh, continue your passions, to continue to pursue them. I also would say that um, uh, throughout the day this morning, I've heard the word inspiring a lot of times. And it's clear that you, every one of you, are inspiring. Um, it's easy to tell when you're inspiring, when you're standing in front of the United Nations, somebody said they were giving speeches at the United Nations, and, and in, in clearly leadership roles. It, it may be harder for you to know how much you are a role model in very quiet ways that you will never know. And that plays out in our business because I get grateful client letters who tell me all the time that a student did a, a very small act of kindness for a, either an animal or for the family. And so I would encourage you to remember that, that you model every moment, really, um, the, the virtues of kindness, compassion, wanting to help others. And so sometimes that plays out in visible ways for which you get really lovely awards that you all deserve, but sometimes it plays out in very personal ways. And so, um, so I encourage all of us, uh, there has never been a more important time uh, locally, nationally, globally, to champion civic life. Each of you have done that in your own special ways. I sincerely hope that we will all take up the challenge of, of civic life and continue that, especially at times uh, that really need it. So congratulations again to all the awardees, their family, and to Tufts. Well, thank you, Debbie, for those words. Um, thank you, Alan, for uh, being the great MC. To all the awardees, uh, congratulations. You are truly inspiring, and I'm glad that you got to share this with your families and friends and all those that nominated you for these important awards. For the seniors, um, I look forward to seeing you through to graduation and then afterwards as alumni and ambassadors for Tufts. And for those that are still here, we look forward to your leadership on campus. Thank you very much. Thank you.